Welcome to our first tutorial in over half a year. It, it, it's been a long time. <laughs> we have a fun project today. Um, it's, a, it's a small project, but I think it could be a big beginner project. It, there's nothing too complicated. Can, can I interrupt you? Okay. I, I've always wanted to do something. What's that? Today feels like the day. All right. Are, are you ready? I don't know. We're gonna make geese. We're gonna we're gonna make little goose gooses. So we have the tutorial in conjunction with a fiber giveaway, but the tutorial will be available long afterwards. But we'll still talk about the materials that you need um, and the materials in the giveaway that you can use to make the goose. And I have they're sort of scattered around. I have a white one. I have a gray goose. And I have a little kind of more traditional, well, they're all, they're all worthy, I shouldn't say that. This one has um, brown and, and more, a little more darks. And they are to scale with the nativity animals, which, uh, they don't stand up, by the way. <laughs> um, which makes them a fun fall project. I don't know, it just seems seasonally appropriate. And they're just, there's something about their shape that's really pleasing to get and, and actually is not difficult to achieve. So we'll be using off-white chunky core. Um, the gray goose I did make with gray core, but we have off-white chunky core. If you look at images, goose images, you'll see there is a huge range from white to almost black. Lots of browns, lots of grays. Because it's a small project, I would use I would stick with short staple fibers. They're too small to shingle, you know, or to use um, a top coat type fiber, which is one of the things that makes this a great beginner project because it's all direct felting. I did do a fun little thing where I put a darker color in the wing and reverse needled it out and stabbed it back in to get some lines and some different details. I did that on the white one too with some, um, might not, I'll, you'll be able to see when we go overhead. Um, he has some golds and some tan warm colors in there. So it's a fun little, little project to experiment with the reverse needles. So basically, natural colors, cores, and the armature is very simple 22 gauge cloth covered wire. Very simple. What do you, what do you want to add, Milo? Uh, um, I recently ate some goose. You did? I, yeah, it was a little, it was a little foul. <laughs> we're, we're starting strong. Yeah, we're gonna take a gander at this project. We we should. All right, let's get started. I want to show you guys some more wool options. I use off-white chunky core almost all the time, and these three geese have light bellies and light um, faces, so. Off-white chunky core works great. You could also use gray core or oats, um, lots of different options. For the legs, we have a variety of core colors that work. This is wheat, caramel, and this is the um, chunky pumpkin core. And these three geese actually have all these three different legs. So it's fun because you can make a lot of different colors and those work great. We'll need black for eyes and details. Carob is an excellent gray color. It's a warm gray. It's solid. So it's great for a small project. I like having a blender like gray core or oats, any of the, any of the gray cores. I also made myself two blends using carob, uh, gray core and a couple of different merinos. So I have these on hand if I, if I want to use them, but I think I'll stick with the, um, the readily available core wools for this project. And we are going to use 22 gauge wire and I think a half a pipe cleaner actually works for each goose. So to begin the armature, we're going to find Here's the armature, by the way. It's pretty simple. 
This is one full 22 gauge wire and half of a pipe cleaner. We're going to find the center of our wire. So if you're a beginner, like a very beginner, the challenges with this project are going to be wrapping the skinny elements like the beak and the legs. But the shapes of the goose itself are very simple. When I twist my wire, I, I use a four, finger and my thumb from the inside and do an even rather loose, I'd say these are sort of quarter inch twists. So you don't have to, you don't have to twist from this end. You don't have to twist super tightly, but you do want to twist evenly so that you're marrying the wires together. We want to twist five inches and that would leave a four inch remainder. So that's just two different ways to look at it. So I'm going to go about there. And then I want the end to be pinched on the tight side because unlike ducks, geese do not have a big wide bill. They have a kind of a more pointy bill. This I want to give an S shape. So a small amount of it, we'll say about three quarters of an inch will be the head. And the majority of it is the neck and chest. And then we have a V remaining, and this is where we're going to add our pipe cleaner. I have a half of a pipe cleaner already. I'm going to find the center. And I just putting the two mountain tops together here and twisting the pipe cleaner around the 22 gauge one time. And then I can twist these together. And one ended up a little longer, which is fine. I like to fold the end over so that I don't have a real pointy, um, sharp edge of a wire sticking out. So just fold that over so that it's rounded. Ouch, see, I just poked myself. And I want this to be about two inches anywhere in there is fine. This is not, doesn't have to be exact. Now the remainder of the 22 gauge wire is going to come down and be the legs. We do want about an inch distance where we're going to make a little fold and that indicates um, basically the heel of the goose, of the goose leg, which you don't see. I'm going to go an inch. It gets kind of absorbed in the goose's body. <laughs> you don't really see it. So if you look at these, whoops, this is where the, um, that part of the leg is going up into the body. Mostly you see the bottom inch of the leg. And then we want to go an inch and a quarter. And that should leave you about an inch of wire to make your foot. And then the foot is a triangle. You have to visualize dividing this inch into thirds. So I come out from the bend one third. Go 90, deg 90 degrees and then come. Actually, it's going to be more than 90. Come out another third and close the triangle. Can you see that, Milo? I don't know if we want to zoom on that or not. Super zoom? I don't know. I just want to make sure it's the triangle is visible. That's it. That's our armature. Nice and quick. Mm -hmm. So the first things we're going to do is wrap the beak and wrap the legs.
So I think I'm gonna try the carob on the beak. I'm gonna do a goose marked like this. So I'm gonna go dark on the beak and golden on the legs. So I pulled myself a four or five inch strip and I'm gonna quarter it. It's a small area, I need a narrow, a narrow strip of wool. Even though the beak is only half of the head, I can wrap as much as I need to because the face shapes are gonna go over and end of the beak where it needs to end. So in other words, I don't have to wrap the beak just on this tippy one quarter inch. I can start back here, get a good, you know, solid anchored wrap going. Then I can come out to the beak. This is a tricky, uh, a tricky skill. Like when you're just getting started, this tight wrapping. So I keep my ribbon nice and narrow. If I get too wide, this is what happens. It falls off the edge. I can't control where it's going. It gets really fuzzy. So the more narrow and controlled and tight I can keep it, the more I can directly dictate where the wool goes. When I get to the end of the beak, I'm gonna angle back right away. I'm not gonna linger there. If you wrap too much around the end of something, the wool just wants to slide off. So when you wrap down and then angle back, it sort of like anchors it down on the tip. And that's it. That's all this, it's just a little pointy, you know, tiny little wrapped cone. As I wrap, you know, I just pulled my extra off and I have this fringe. And if you just take that fringe and keep smoothing it out against your wrap, it's gonna hold everything tightly and you barely even have to stab. So my wool is coming off the end just a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about it too much because we are gonna use um, swax. I mean, you can, it's an option. So I have a finer needle, I have a 42 gauge here, and I'm just stabbing back at it a little bit to, to keep it from further slipping. I'm going to use caramel to wrap the legs. So I'm gonna pull a six inch piece and split it in half. And then I'm just gonna gently give those a tug to um, smooth the fibers together and thin, um, thin the section a little bit. This is sort of before and after. So you're gonna make this look really easy and new people are gonna be like, <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> Don't be frustrated out there. Yeah. So I'm gonna start at the top of the leg and I'm just gonna hold it with my thumb. These don't have to be like super duper skinny. I mean, you want them tight and smooth, but they're not, you know, it's not like a tiny little mouse toe that has to be super skinny. But I am, if you, if you want something to be wrapped tightly, notice how this hand follows the other, the wrapping hand down and every time I go around, I kind of like smooth it tight, smooth it tight and just keep reinforcing what I just wrapped. Also, when you're wrapping tightly, you want to be able to pull on it. So you have to hold it closely. If I hold it too far out, it's going to pull apart. When you get to the foot, you're gonna to try to wrap your wrap your triangle by, it's a little tricky and it doesn't work perfectly, but let's see if we go around the two sides and then try to go around, like kind of like you're, you're hitting each facet, but your wool is gonna to wanna to, um, slip off. This gets a triangular piece over it so it doesn't have to be really pretty. It just needs to be wrapped so that we can attach that other, other piece to it. 
And now I'm using my needle to make sure everything stays in place. When you wrap a, a limb or an appendage, the first wrap is what holds everything tight. In other words, you know, it's okay that this fringe is sticking up here because it's the fact that I wrapped the wool around it over itself that it's staying. In other words, if I come here and just really pull it tight right over itself, that's gonna hold it. Rather than immediately, whoops, sorry goose, immediately traveling down the leg. Do you know what language a goose normally speaks? Um, no, what? The Portuguese. <laughs> are there goose proverbs? That, oh, there are many. They are plentiful. <laughs> Tell me a goose proverb. When the fox wants to catch geese, he wags his tail. Interesting. Pretends to be friendly? Or is uh, the geese mesmerized I, by I the wagging know. tail? Which country is that? That is German. Maybe to catch his attention? I don't know. I got chased by a goose once, it was scary. <laughs> A big domestic goose, not like a little Canadian goose, could handle the Canadian goose. <laughs> I say that, but I would have run from the Canadian goose also. Okay, so that's that. That's all it is, and we're gonna move to the body. I'm gonna work with off-white chunky core, and I'm gonna take about six inch pieces that I'm going to quarter. So I'm gonna split it in half, I make a little window, and when you make a window and pull apart, it pulls apart very evenly without a lot of fuzz. First thing I'm going to do is wrap up the neck. If you can make this tight again, um, then you don't have as much stabbing to do and you have a little more control over your project. But this is a this is a practice thing. When I do little projects like this, and especially as you're learning something, I like to make um, like I would make maybe three armatures, you know, just right in a row. Make your armatures, and then by the time you do the third one, you're going to be really good at them. And then wrap three sets of legs, and so each thing you um, kind of develop your skill. Do them in the same order and your third one will be good. <laughs> yeah. So you can see how now I've closed in on the length of the beak, but where, with where I ended my, um, my off-white chunky core. I'm gonna put a piece, um, well, there's a few crisscrosses we need to make. And this is a really useful technique we use it all the time in many of our animals. The first one is going to be, we, we need to get a little distance between the legs here. We want some body here. We don't want them like smushed together. So I'm gonna start on the body and then I'm gonna crisscross between the legs, come around the tail, crisscross between the legs, come around the body and just keep doing that until this piece is gone. So that's what that looks like. Do another one. Just going to go up the tail and back. Danish proverb. Okay, this is going to be good. Every man thinks his own geese are swans. Oh. That's good, that's very positive. Yeah. Or delusional. <laughs> There's a fine line between <laughs> optimism and delusion. <laughs> so that's three of my four quarters. 
body up to the head, the crisscross, and the tail. I'm gonna do another crisscross. I'm gonna go around behind the legs, crisscross over the back, go around in front of the legs, crisscross over the back, and keep doing that. And that's gonna build up in this crescent a little bit. So going around behind the body, behind the legs, and going over the back, going in front of the legs, and going over the back. And I probably should have used a little bit more wool. <laughs> so now we have to do a few of these steps again. But that's okay. It's better to build up slowly than to have way too much going on. Let's see what my notes say. That would be that would be wise. Three places to crisscross. One, two. All right. Wait. Back, chest, what? Okay. They have a very pronounced chest. So we're gonna take another like a really healthy six inch piece because that was a little, a little wimpy and I'm quartering it again. So we did the crisscross between the legs. We did the crisscross on the back. Now we're going to do one. I'm kind of exaggerating the bend at the base of the neck here because I want to really get this chest a little more prominent. So in this curve, I'm going to do the crisscross right in this sort of like one and a half inch section. So I'm coming around here and then I'm crisscrossing over the back and coming here. And you can see that's starting to build up a chest here. I need to do the over the back one again because that was kind of a wimpy piece. I just keep making X's over the back. They have such a fun like dumpy butt. I really like the goose, the goose shape. I would say dumpy butts are possibly your favorite feature. Just butts in general. I have two more quarters. One I'm going to take from the base of the neck up and then turn around. And what that does is it begins to um, give a little bit of a cone shape. So wider at the base and then narrower as it goes up towards the head. Kind of getting it, I'm going, staying in the same place for a moment to get it to really stay. And now I'll start to travel. And when I get towards the head, I'm gonna turn around. And then that's going to put two layers towards the bottom, which is gonna make it thicker. Ryan Gosling is in his late 30s. <laughs> no, he's not. Is he? I don't know, but he's old enough to be Ryan Goose, don't you think? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> now I want to know how old he is. In my mind, he's he's close to my age and a potential <laughs> dating, a dating possibility. <laughs> All right, we haven't made John laugh yet. <laughs> He's 39. <laughs> he is 39. <laughs> I've been laughing because I didn't want to like mess up the audio. <laughs> <laughs> not because we're not funny. <laughs> no, no, it's not that. <laughs> no, no, you're hilarious. <laughs> All right, now look at that sweet little, it's already something. Mm -hmm. Let's make some pillows. There's three pillows. Back, dumpy butt, and chest. 
And we're going to use Izuli tool, which makes a nice one inch wide pillow. And we're going to use off-white chunky core. Um, same thing, I think quarters of six inch pieces is a good place to start. And if you take your quarter and wrap the Zoli tool, you can travel a little. You wanna make about a one inch pillow. Um, when you wrap a shape on a tool or any implement, you wanna be able to go out and back because that's what holds the shape. If you just go one direction, it slips off. I'll show you. If you just go one way, when you pull your shape off, it wants to just go whoop like that. But when you pull this off, it stays in a nice little pillow. So we'll do that three times. British proverb, mm -hmm. many women, mm -mm. many words, many geese, many turds. <laughs> I think that's my favorite. <laughs> they get right to it. Yes. Not your favorite is this Romanian proverb. <laughs> okay. Where there are women and geese, there wants no noise. A little what? rude. <laughs> Well, it's kind of the, eh. yeah, the, same the same thing. Women use a lot of words. Uh, that's, yes. what, that's what we're getting at. I don't know why the British had to bring the turds into it, though. I'm telling you what. Ducks and geese. Oh, there's poop everywhere. There's poop everywhere. <laughs> it's You slip in it. It's like slimy. I don't know. It like doesn't break down or something. It just stays forever. They're beautiful, but... You do not want them <laughs> in your yard. And they might chase you. <laughs> and they chase you. All right, I'm going to pick the biggest one I think I'm going to put on the back. It just They just happen to be a little bit different. This one, I'm, so they all go long, long ways. One goes on the back, one goes on the chest, and one makes the kind of like, you, you well, I'll t attach each one at a time. Let's start with the butt. The tapered end just comes through the front legs. And then the other end comes out towards the tail. And this is the point where I need to get a reference picture, but I'll just put these shapes on first. Chest bump. Sometimes, I don't know, I'm torn between this way and this way, but we're gonna go this way. So you want the tapered end to meet the tapered end of the butt piece. And then to really accentuate that chest. You don't spread it super tight. You sort of leave it. I'm kind of encouraging a uh, um, an angle here rather than, yeah, like pulling yeah. it tight, kind of encouraging the shape. Every shape that we make on a tool or sh you know shape that we make to add to a project has further sculpting potential. Like the idea of the shape is to give us the piece to play with and sculpt once it's on. The way that I work, almost every project, some don't have armatures, but there's an armature, there's wrapping, and then you wrap to a degree that you can't wrap anymore. And then that's when you start adding shapes because you can't wrapping always puts things, you know, evenly. So then we need to switch to shapes so that we can put the wool right where we want it. So this is just, you know, giving a little more dimension, sort of like a, it was convex. Um, I mean, concave, well, I don't know. It was scooped in. Now we're making it scoop out. <laughs> I think I 
want to take, I have one more quarter here. I want to take it and just wrap the front part of the body, kind of pull it together. I can't remember if that was part of my process or not, but I'm doing it. And I'm going to do it in a bit of a crisscross. I can't just go around. It's going to slip off. So I've got to go around the body here, crisscross on the back in front of the neck by going in front of the neck. You might need a longer shape than I just piece than I just grabbed. That was one of my six inch quarters. So that helps pull everything together. I can do that around the butt too. That's your little Spanx piece. Yeah, that's your, that's your suck it in, pull it in piece. Like I said, it's going to want to slip because it's an angled. There we go. So now we're ready for colors and details. Well, let's do the little, the little face shapes. Okay, we're going to move to the face. The face gets three shapes, just like the body got three shapes. Well, if you count the bump, the beak bump, which I'm sure has a proper name. Yes. <laughs> I have Googled domestic goose and you'll see a lot of inspirational images. The one that I chose is goes kind of like white to gray, has a black beak and orange legs. So it's perfect. Looks like they call it a knob. A knob. We're going to make a knob. You basil, will need... A basil knob. Oh, a basil knob. That's... It's like a mix of nasal and beak. <laughs> it's my basil knob. You'll need a toothpick or a skewer or something very skinny and smooth <laughs> to wrap around. And I'm going to take a thin strip of black. I've got about a three inch thin strip and I want to make a tight little seed on here like the size of a sunflower seed so I'm, I, I'm pulling tightly I'm staying within the same half of an inch if you think quarter of an inch you're going to be better off and I don't need quite all that So this makes a very tight seed and that is going to go at the back of the beak to make the knob. And I really want to like make it stick up. So this is a little tricky. You got to watch your, watch your little fingers, get this tacked on each side. I like to always put my project onto my felting surface because it gives me, it's safe for my fingers and it gives me something firm to work against so that my stab is effective. Oh, don't be air felt. Don't air felt. So this is, you know, right now it's kind of like sticking up a lot, but we're going to have some face shapes behind it. And I want to make three pillows, small pillows. I'm going to use the, the face ace, but if you have um, like a knitting needle or anything smooth that is within this width range, like a quarter inch range. And I'm going to do two using um, off-white chunky core. I'm going to split one of my six inch quarters in half. And I'm going to do one using carob. I'm going to work kind of on this third section here. Is that like a quarter, quarter piece yeah. of carob? 
Um, yeah, I quartered the carob. So just going around. I went around about four times. We always recommend watching the watching the tutorial in whole before you start working because, well, first of all, sometimes I backtrack because I make mistakes. And also because you're gonna see where each shape goes and get an understanding of what their purpose is, you know, like a roadmap before you actually make them. Some people do that. Do what? Watch the th Yes. Some people actually do. Some people are Some... very good. They get the gold star. Yeah. I, I'm, if I'm learning something new, I'm the person who just is like, I can just do it. And then I, then I have to do it again. So we'll start with the cheeks and I'm going to, my shapes always have a more tapered end and a fuller end. So let me look at my reference here. Okay. We want a nice little poof on each side of the face. This one is just a tiny bit big to pull a little bit of wool off. So using my needle, I'm gonna sculpt this right onto the side of this little head. This is where working small does, you know, I think is hard. So this is where if this, we were to say this is not a beginner project. It's because of the, the size of some of the details. Mostly when I stab a shape like this on, I'm kind of tacking around the edges, not so much stabbing right in the middle. I'm using a 38 needle, which is just my general. The 40 wouldn't um, tack as well. Cause you can kind of hear it like the crunch of it going into the wrapped armature. All right, so I have the two. <laughs> I have the two cheeks on and then the forehead comes up to the bump and just on the onto the back of the head. It's a lovely basil knob you got there. Thank you. Sometimes they have a waddle. So that's a fun thing to make. You gotta have a waddle to go with your knob. I feel like his beak got. I'm gonna stab stuff back because I feel like his beak got short. The direction that you stab has a big impact on your sculpture. It's a force that you're applying to the shapes. Oh, this one has a waddle. Okay, the waddle, I would make a tiny little taco. I'm gonna use carob. So I have a little like inch by half inch piece. Who else is talking about waddles and tacos today? Just curious. <laughs> and, and knobs. <laughs> mm, I'm not gonna use the carob. I'm gonna use oats. I feel like I want it to be not, because the cheeks are gonna be light, so I don't want it to be a crazy contrast to the You're like a little one inch 
one inch piece. It's small. The reason we want to make a taco is because we want the finished center and the two fringy edges. I think that's how I did it. This one has a waddle. So I'm stabbing the center. I could put, I think I should put a little piece across the center. This is where I'm gonna put my carrot and then it'll stab through a little bit. And the, the purpose of going perpendicular, running the perpendicular fiber is that it won't, now it won't, can't pull apart because it's got fiber going the other way. So it's up to you to shape this to the size that you want it to be. So I'm just kind of manipulating the wool around. And this is nice and flat. So I'm gonna grab the punch tool. Thank you, Milo, it should be in there. Which really flattens things out. But I need to leave my fringe because the fringe is how it's going to attach. So I'm gonna pull some of it off. I don't need quite that much. And I'm gonna flare this out. And stab it onto each cheek. So now I'm going to just refine um, some color changes. I think I'll blend a little bit of carob. Oh, let me put my eyes in and then we'll see what, what it needs. So to make the eyes, I'm taking a tiny bit of black. It's like a quarter inch by one inch, one and a half inch strip. And I just, fold it as small as I can get it in my fingers. And the reason I fold it versus making a, um, a shape on a tool is because it has some softness to it so that I can stab it, stab it in the way I need it to be. If I make this shape on the tool, it's gonna be like a hard little seed and it's gonna be hard to get round. So I want to stab in to right above the cheek. If you can look at a picture, that is a great thing because it's going to show you where the eye goes. Right above the cheek, right into the crease between the cheek and the forehead. If you stab in at the edges, it'll make your eye smaller and smaller. Even that piece that I pulled was a little bit big. We're gonna do um, a little gray leg poof, two wings, and then just some final, final coloring. It's, um, there's so many ways that this can um, be finished in terms of, in terms of the coloring. So I'm just showing one example, um, but I encourage you, to try different things. Okay. The leg, let's see, I'll use oats here. The sort of the thigh, I guess, the bulk around the leg, I make just by folding or making a double decker taco, which is a shape that we use a lot. So I have two three inch pieces of oats and I'm going to stab a third of the way down, fold that over, stab about a half of an inch area, fold that back up 
and stab that. That gives me fringe at the top and two, um, three layers worth of wool and a rounded edge at the bottom. So I can felt that on, it's a little wide, I'll take a little bit off. So I can put, let the fringe go up and let the rounded part, I'm not fully wrapping it around, but I'm sort of going around this top part of the leg to make that meaty thigh area. Mm, meaty. Mm -hmm. So my piece was a little wide, so I'm just gonna pull a little bit off of this other one. The width of the double decker taco is the width that you need the shape to be. So I'm doing about a half an inch. I was joking about the goose tasting fowl. If you ever want to feed me goose, I will eat it. A friend gave me some, wait, were they goose eggs or duck eggs? They were interesting. They were more, a little more like kind of rubbery than chicken eggs, like very firm. Taste did the same, just the texture was different. The wings is a fun place to make, to try the reverse needle if you wanna try it. So for example, I have this, um, this bat, it's a very soft um, lamb bat. This is actually part of a giveaway. So I'm gonna take two, sort of two inch sections of that. And I'm gonna layer, I'm gonna put some black inside of it so that I might be able to pull that back out with the reverse needle and make some kind of details in the wings. So I'm taking a thin but even section of black. I'm gonna flip that over and then to tone the wing just a little bit from body to tip, this way. I'm gonna put some oats down here to give it a little bit of color variation here. Real thin, I don't need to add more bulk here. And then maybe a darker color towards the tip of the wing. Black, you don't use black, black. I know, often. well, well it's what, what I have, it's what I have here. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it over. I still have my black tip away from me, the oats towards me, because I'm gonna make a triangle and I want the, the dark tip to be at the point of the triangle. So the first thing I do is just stab the center line. And then I stab my triangle shape and fold the fiber in. And by putting a few different fibers, it just kind of does its own interesting thing. Kind of gives some natural um, changes without you having to labor over it and you know work so hard. So I'm thinking about the size of this, of the goose that the wing needs to be. Probably should have or could have laid out three triangles because we need a little one for the tail too. So I'm actually gonna build that before I put these on. So on this one, my black kind of sneaked up only on the very tip. On this one, my black did what I wanted it to do um, and stayed towards the edge, um, like kind of gradually changed to black. Whereas this one, for some reason, just went right up onto the tip. So I'm gonna put a little more black there to make them match. Okay. 
Not sure why that happened. Maybe it shifted around when I was moving things around. So for the tail, we're gonna go just a little smaller. I'm just gonna make it out of the um, out of the bat. But this could be any core. I'm gonna put a little black in there. Nope, I'm gonna put a little carob in there. This is about an inch and a half by an inch and a half. All right, I wanna put the tail on first because the two wings tips kind of overlap the tail. So I'm just gonna put that triangle onto his little pointy tail butt that we wrapped and stab down. And the fringe can just come onto the body. It's gonna get covered by the wings anyway. So some geese have real distinctive markings like strong lines and some have a lot of gra gradation like gradual changes. Just looking at my picture here. So this goose that I'm looking at has a gradual change as it comes towards the chest here. So I'm gonna put my dark wing tip back onto the tail. And you know, if you were to make a bigger goose, <laughs> there would be a lot more detail that you could get, but these are just little representations. I think they would make nice ornaments Yep. I think they would look, like I said, they look good with the nativity. The wings are going to kind of meet on the top of the back, the two wing triangles. There has to be more jokes, Milo. Well, you're working on the wing, so here's one. Okay. What did the goose say when he found out about flying south? I don't know what. Wanna hear my great idea? It's all in my great. Oh. <laughs> I think I could have thought about that for a while and not, <laughs> not gotten it. Yeah, it emphasize it. Yeah. The, the Wanna hear migrate. Migrate idea. Yeah, it's really, uh, I'm not even sure it's a joke. Play on words, <laughs> I guess. So I want my neck to get um, even thicker. It's a little too, like, just skinny. So I can, let's see, do I want to wrap it? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do this wrap where you hold it on one side, go around, and then end on the other side so that it's like a little scarf. And then this oats also is gonna blend my wings and chest a little bit. That's a better shape. I'm going to put a little bit of oats on the chest here. Oh, this one has a, like two distinctive sort of breastbone, breast bumps. I'm going to do that. One, just rolled it in my hands, a soft pillow. I'll show you when I do the other one. I just took a two inch piece, folded in my hands and make his little
Yeah, I like this. They're just shapes. It's just fun. All right, I'm going to take some Serafina White and do a little sort of color changes so that it's not, so that my shapes um, are a little less distinguished and there's more blending edges. So I want him to have white on his belly. The fringe of your pieces is a blender. So whenever you can let fringe overlap something, it's like, it's a color and um, bump blender. Oh, see, that looks like so much better already. I'm gonna put white here, and then I'm gonna put carob on the back of his neck. Like so, his little pants. Yeah. <laughs> These are so satisfying. This is tricky, putting white vertically onto something so skinny. Look out for the waddle, working the white around the waddle. Wellie, well, wellie, well. Ish. Spanish proverb, he that eats the king's geese shall be choked with the feathers. I'm glad it was he. Yes. <laughs> I'm exempt. <laughs> shall be choked with whose feathers? With feathers. Oh. Well, the goose. Yeah, the goose's the goose feathers. feathers. I get it now. I don't know. I was heard king, and I was like, wait, who's got the feathers? Okay. So he that don't, eats. Don't eat the king's goose. Yeah. You're in trouble. The king should be sharing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Checking my image to see what I want to put where. Ooh. This one's good. Hungarian proverb. Okay. Many geese overpower a pig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, one goose overpowered a Sarah. That's, <laughs> just, they're did intimidating. Did tell us about a goose situation? Yes, I think he did. I think he told us how to catch a goose. Oh, yeah. That was a whole thing. It was like, what was it? The legs or the tail? Or you got to tuck it under your arm? <laughs> some kind of business? Like, eliminate the threat of the something. Ooh. I know. I don't do a white dot in their eye because it's too tiny and I can't see anymore. But maybe you can. All right, so here are some. We're gonna do the feet. I need to, I want to blend this away. I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. I'm mixing oats and carob, which are the two colors that I want to soften the, the color change. That works really well, and I'm probably gonna end up doing that on both sides. Well, let's do that, and then I'm gonna show you the reverse needle in a different place. So by blending those colors, you just took two bits of each fiber and pulled them together. Yeah, that way the blend is doing the work. I mean, the fringe is doing the work also, but okay. So this is a fun thing. They have kind of t two sets of wing feathers. You Because your wing is poofy, you can delineate that with just by stabbing firmly and that kind of makes the impression that there's dimension there. The trick is getting them symmetrical, I find. Okay, I put two reverse needles into a pen tool and marked it with some black tape, but you could use a single reverse needle. I have quite a bit of change, color change here that I'd like to soften. So I can 
pull fiber out from underneath, which is mainly going to be um, oats and off-white chunky core, and then just stab it back in. And that does some cool things, and you'll have fun playing with that. What grows down when it grows up? I don't know. A uh, goose. <laughs> I could have guessed that. <laughs> my like, brain. I don't know. I can't. Think. I can't I'm think. I'm, my brain turns to mush when I'm trying to figure out how to explain what I'm doing. Oh, look at him! I know he's starting to. He's starting to be a good little goose. Um, I'm going to show you the feet. Okay, in the tail too, what I was saying was you could try pulling out a line and stabbing it back in. And that'll give you like a few um, sort of feather, feather lines. The feet are pretty simple. Do we want to slack, sir? I was wondering if you wanted me to turn that on. Is it here? It should be here. Is it on the end of the table? Yep. Okay. We're going to make just two triangles, and then they get um, felted onto feet. So I'm going to use the same color. I pulled a two-inch piece. I'm going to split it in half. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of the fringe and I'm gonna make a taco. And I'm taking a tiny bit of the fringe to put it across the center of the taco, just to hold my shape together. I want this to end up being about a half an inch wide. So this is gonna be the top tip of my foot. I'm gonna fold this in and let the fringe come down and make a triangle. It's the opposite triangle of the wing triangles because it's wide here, pointy at the end. And then I can pull quite a bit of this fringe off. We want something like that. You know, the Danish, mm -hmm. they say it is of no use making shoes for geese. Especially when you're carving some wood. Making shoes for geese. I don't know. It felt like the right timing. Right, right. You know, it's interesting because the Proverbs generally have some kind <laughs> of world, you know, worldwide wisdom, but every once in a while, there's a cultural element that we don't understand. Yeah, like, what is that? That's lost in translation. Yeah. And the translation. Like, don't bother making goose shoes. <laughs> this is I'm going to tell my kids, you know. Oh, I'm really going to drive that one home. You'll sound so wise. My mom always said, don't make shoes for geese. I mean, it's not that it's bad advice. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> it's just that we don't know. Great <laughs> probably, you know, probably a good idea not to make shoes for these. I'm putting the triangle onto the little foot. So if I turn it over, I can take these fringy ends and turn them around. Onto the bottom of the foot a little bit. Now, I have not been able to determine what is up with geese feet. They're like, kind of like a duck. Here we go, what's this one say? I don't think they have like a back thing, which is why we can't make them stand up. But I am gonna take, when I put the swax on, I'm gonna take my fringe back here and give them a little heel. They have to have a heel. They don't look like they have it. Yet. I know, but that's like anatomically. Well, they're balanced with their body. 
bet their necks are part of their balance. <laughs> So I start by putting the triangle on top of the foot, felting it in, then turn it over and bring it around. This is very exciting to be making a tutorial. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a very good one. Dutch proverb. Okay, all Geese, right, well you built it up now, okay. Geese are plucked as long as they have any feathers. That's a good one. It's very depressing in a way, but extrapolate that to as long as there's something to offer. Yeah, it gets we're used. taking it, we're plucking it. We're taking it. it, yes. Something about my little goose face today is not quite right. But these guys, I nailed it. Look at my other ones. <laughs> that's, what, that's what my conclusion. I think my beak got a little short. So let's see. These guys have, I'm going to measure for you. Well, they're, they're swats. Wait till yeah. they're swats. Okay, they have a half inch beak. All right, he's going to be okay. And I can keep tweaking. His eyes need to be very small. And what do I want to do here? I lost my goose again. <laughs> it's a goose, a I'm goose bad. ketchup. Mm -hmm. I want a little blender, blenders in here. So I'm going to take that oats and carob mix. Just mixing them up. If you have swax, you want to have turned it on. Yeah, it takes a little while. Um, um, I feel like their eye is more towards the front of their head, so I'm closing this um, seam here with a little blend, which will also make the eye look further forward on the head. That's better. I like it better now. This is good. You show people how to <laughs> fix the problems. So I like to put swax on the beak and the feet. And you can even kind of pinch it into the three little toe points. Swax is best added a little bit at a time. Press it in, and then if you need more, add more. Don't like dip your foot in, or um, that's gonna be a proverb someday. Best not to dip your goose foot into swax. It also likes to be added to fiber that is pretty firmly felted. So you want these to not be fuzzy. Lucy goosey. Fuzzy wuzzy, Lucy goosey. So I'm using my color shaper, which is a silicone tip. And dipping it into my melted swax. Like I said, I'm not trying to get it totally complete first time. I'm just putting a layer on the top, a layer on the bottom. And then I like to have a little bit of bunny butter on my fingers. It just helps smooth things out. And then I'm pressing it in. And you can see when I press it in, 
Um, you can see where it was a little thicker. If you ever have trouble with swax, it's bumpy or something went wrong, you can't really get it off, but you can take a flame to it and reheat it and then be able to press or manipulate it a little bit. You wanna wait a few seconds before you press it with your fingers. Cause if you don't wait the few seconds, it will want to stick to your fingers more than it wants to stick to the wool. And you really want it to be more ingrained in the wool. So I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. It definitely needs another coat and I will do the beak. I'm using clear swax on top of the black, which I actually like because it kind of gives the black a little more natural look. The pigment is very strong. Yeah. So I'm letting it dry for just a couple of seconds and then I'm pressing it in. And you can see how that just shined the beak up. And then you can shape the beak a little bit, make it pointy or make it round. What would you swax the knob? I'm not gonna swax the knob. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow, <laughs> not today. All right, I'm gonna return to the feet. The beak only needed that one uh, coat application. I'm kind of concentrating the swax more towards the toes and not so much like onto the leg. All right, now I got a little extra swax. I can kind of make, pinch my, um, whatever fiber fringe there is, I can kind of pinch it into little toes. And there's our goose. He's a handsome fellow. Turned out handsome. This one's waddleless. This one's waddleless. And while the swack's on, I will swax his beak and feet. I like this gray goose. Milo got my goose to stand. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you did it. I'm talking to you, Milo. Uh, hello. <laughs> Like, what do we need to say? I, I, I don't know. This was exciting. I feel like we're a little out of practice, but we, we powered through. We, <clears throat> whoops. We did. We did well. We hope that you will share your project on Facebook on Serafina Felting Fanfare. That's our group. We would love to see what you made and your future work as well. So we look forward to seeing the gooses populate. Yeah, yeah. Peace. Thanks for joining us. Bye.